Number 68, figure 22.62 shows a long straight wire just touching a loop carrying a current I sub 1. Both lie in the same plane, letter A. What direction must the current I2 in the straight wire have to create a field at the center of the loop in the direction opposite to that created by the loop? All right, so here's the picture. We have a current in the loop here that is traveling in a counterclockwise direction. And therefore, uh, we can use right-hand rule number two to help us identify what the magnetic field must be like inside of this loop. So choose any particular point you like around the circle. I'm going to choose the topmost point here, and I'm going to draw a tangential line that represents the direction of the current at that particular point. Okay. Now using right-hand rule number two, with your thumb pointing to the left, you're going to curl your fingers around the top and in through the bottom, right, and through the loop. Right, as you curl your fingers and through the loop, they should be coming out at you. Okay, so that means that inside the loop now, the current that is created, uh, the current is cre that is moving in a counterclockwise direction is creating a magnetic field that is going to be pointing towards you. So you can put some dots in here if you like. Okay, so the current here, uh, the magnetic field is coming out at you, all right, in the loop. Now that is just the uh, magnetic field that is being produced by the uh, current in the loop. So now what we have to do is we have to figure out, well, what current do I now need in I2 in order to oppose the magnetic field created by the loop? So in other words, I need to identify a current here in I2, whether it's moving down to the bottom left or up and to the top right, that will produce a magnetic field now that is going into the page. Okay, so again, we're going to use right hand rule number two. The only way, you know, you're wrapping your fingers basically around this particular rod, and the only way that you're going to wrap your fingers and have them point into the loop here is if the current and your thumb, that is, is pointing now down and to the left. Okay, so that is then the direction now of, and let me put that in black. The blue is kind of gelling a little too, uh, too closely. So some X's in here, blah, 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 blah. Okay, great. The current here must be pointing down and to the left. All right, so that's the answer to letter A. Letter B now, it says, what is the ratio I1 divided by I2 that gives zero field strength at the center of the loop? Now, uh, what we can do is, uh, in order for it to give zero magnetic field strength, that means that the magnetic field produced by I1 must equal the magnetic field produced by I2. In other words, the magnetic field, well, not in other words, I'm just going to write it down. The magnetic field produced by uh, the uh, I1, the current one, must equal then the magnetic field strength produced by the current 2, right? So I'll call that sub 2. Now, we realize that uh, for the first current, that's a loop, and for the second current, that's a straight wire. Now, we have two formulas here on the right-hand side that talk about uh, magnetic field strengths relating related to uh, the shape, right, of the current. In other words, this is for a straight current, for a straight wire, and this is for a loop of current. So in other words, what I'm going to start to do now is start to do some substitutions. So I know that this should be the permittivity of free, uh, permeability, excuse me, of free space, multiplied by the current in one, divided then by two times the radius then of that loop. Okay, that's the loop one. And the straight wire one is the one on the top. This is the permeability of free space multiplied by the current in the straight wire divided then by 2 pi times then the radius, uh, excuse me. Well, it is radius, right? But technically it is the distance uh, between then the wire and the point of interest or ma the magnetic field point of interest. Now, it says the magnetic field strength at the center of the loop here must be zero basically. So uh, what I realize now, let me get rid of all these dots and stuff, okay? What I realize is that, well, basically, isn't the radius of the loop here, capital R, the same thing as the distance between that particular point of interest and the straight wire? Yes, it is, right? So what I'm going to do here is just basically make that a capital R, all right? Now, what we realize then is now several things will cancel. 
Since these two are identical, well, this is the permeability of free space, that's the permeability of free space, we'll see you later. Since this is a two and that's a two, well, that's the same obviously, so we'll see you later. Since R1, the radius of the loop, is the same thing as the distance between the center of the loop and that straight wire, we'll see you guys later. And all now we're left with here is going to be I1 is equal to I2 over pi. Now what does it ask you to solve for? It asks you to solve for I1 over I2. So look, all you gotta do is just watch, whoop, bring that on down, there's your variable, plug in a one placeholder, and you're good to go. That's it. There's the answer. That's letter B. And then letter C, it says now, what is the direction of the field directly above the loop uh, under this circumstance? So I believe uh, what they're looking for is like, uh, if we look up at the picture, I believe they're saying, what's the direction of the loop, excuse me, of the magnetic field, let's say at that point, above the loop? I think, I think that's what they mean. I really don't know. But um, it's very simple to kind of predict using right hand rule, rule number two on the straight wire with your thumb pointing to the left. Remember, the entire magnetic field there above the wire is basically pointing now into the page, right? All over the place. It's all pointing into the page. So that takes care of that, right? So we know that I'll represent this in red. That, uh, that would be going into the page from I2. So I guess I'll change the color to red. And now for the loop, right? I'll pick this particular point right here of interest. Right, take uh, that particular point, and uh, I realize that um, that also uh, using right hand rule number two, right, with your thumb pointing to the left, and you're going to curl your fingers. That also produces a field into the page at that particular point. Um, now you might say, well, what about the uh, what about the value then on down here? You know, uh, that's a good point because that's pointing now the other direction, right? Um, and uh, with right hand rule number two, right as you're pointing that other direction, then it would be coming out of the page here. But now notice, you know, this particular current at that point is much further away than this particular point. So this is much stronger than that. So therefore, you know, the magnetic field produced by this current is weaker at this point than by this current. And therefore, I don't really care about that little magnetic field coming out of the page uh, up there. All right, doesn't really matter. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. So anyway, the answer there is that it would be going into the page. Have a great day. Take care.